Well, hello there. Uh, this video is a quick tutorial on how to use the circular lithophane design tool. I'll go through it very quickly the first time and then use a little bit more detail the second time. So the first thing you got to do is you got to click here, browse to upload an image. The shortest path to making one of these things involves uploading an image. Here you can see how the design tool will crop your image and then this is how much time it'll take to run, this is the size of the file, the estimated size of the file, and then you just hit create and in roughly seven seconds an image will be, or the lithophane will be made. So in those seven seconds you can consider going to my designs on Thingiverse and liking them, which will help other people find the tool, or becoming a patron uh, at Patreon. There are several different tiers course the best here being the the benchy that also has airplanes on it because airplanes plus giant boat is much cooler than a regular old benchy although a benchy by itself is one of the most popular items to 3d print so it's not all that bad but anyways um the stl is done so now you can just save the stl voila and I actually have already run this just a moment ago because I was I was making this exact same video and you know sort of practicing or whatever but um so this is what you get this is a this is you know it's a circular lithophane I think this is a lithophane it might be a tag so the difference between those now, now I'm going to go into more detail uh, the difference between those is you've got this option up here that says positive tag or negative lithophane. And what this does is it changes whether you get an image or an inverted image when you use this tool. And uh, I say tag because that would be the inverted image if you were to treat it like a lithophane and put a light behind it. But people might want to use that. Um, if they're making, you know, it's something for a, a pet's collar or um, whatever, whatever that would make them want to have the have the uh, image inverted because you're not going to put a light source behind that image. So that's the first option you have. The next option you have is called lithophane resolution, which if you've used my other tools, you know what that is. It basically adjusts how frequent you have um, triangles. So if I zoom in on this, um, and let's see, let's view it so that you can see the triangles, which would be here. So you, you see it's made up of a bunch of triangles, right? So the lithophane resolution determines the distance between uh, the, the horizontal and vertical distance between these triangles and if I had clicked perfectly it would be 0.3 millimeters which is uh, the setting that we put in there so so that's what this value is if you increase this value it makes it so that your surface is smoother it also increases this or sorry if you decrease that value it makes it so that the surface is smoother and it also makes it so that the file size is much larger. Um, having the number there, to say 1.5, will increase the runtime and the file size by uh, to four times larger. Because there, it's the uh, the estimated runtime is proportional to the inverse of this number squared, right? So having it increases the runtime by 4x and there was a rounding situation going on that's why it said 7 it must have actually been 7 and a quarter or thereabouts and then here's the radius um, the radius is not the radius of the outer portion it's the radius of the inner portion so <clears throat> as is shown here and you can see if I change this to 50 you can see what happens um, everything else now becomes smaller relative to that circle on the inside, but it all scales. Um, 
So then the frame width, you could make that twice as large also, and hey, now we look like something that's pretty similar to what we had to begin with. However, this uh, hoop width, um, it, it looks shrunken. It's like a shrunken head thing on top because everything else has gotten larger except for it. So here's the hoop width. The hoop width controls this dimension and this dimension, both of them. So if I were to double that, uh, now we're looking much closer to like what we had to begin with just because I've doubled all of the dimensions. However, the hole diameter, which is this hole right here, um, I would need to double that too. Now we're looking very much like how we were looking earlier. However, uh, the, the frame height is still half. That's, the, that's this height right here. So if I made that 15, well, then that this is just what we had to begin with all scaled up. So, And then you have the max and the min thicknesses, and these set the contrast and the brightness of a lithophane if you have a lithophane. And in practice, you just want to set your minimum thickness to the, uh, the width of the plastic that you put down. Um, so so that you, you're able to have one full pass. Say, say you uh, put down plastic that's 0.5 millimeters thick. Well, then if you put 0.4 in here, then your slicer is going to make, potentially make some parts of the lithophane, uh, you know, put holes in your lithophane because it's going to be like, well, that, that area is thinner than the minimum th thickness I can make. So I'm just going to zero it out. It like it rounds down, and for some slicers. So if you're putting plastic down at uh, 0.5 thickness, 0.5 millimeter thickness, then I'd suggest that. And this can be pretty much whatever. It might make sense for it to be also divisible by the thickness of uh, the plastic that you put down. And then here's the estimated runtime, which is now very large because I have made I've doubled. The radius and have the resolution and here's the estimated file size and you might want to watch this because some slicers and some CAD programs will will cause uh, trouble if you make this number too large you know if you get around 200 megabytes it might really lag up Cura for example and then here is how you crop your image uh, this is the most likely way of making the program fail because you can do things like scoot the circle up and now the circle goes outside of your image and the program is unable to get data for this portion of the circle and it, it uh, crashes right so don't do that and if you get a failure um, the first thing to check is whether or not your circle is even close to the edge. It can just be close to the edge and um, because of how it's, you know, how it works, it could still crop out or try to crop into the image a, a portion that doesn't have data. So uh, be wary of that if you get a failure, then just try to make it so that you don't get as close to the edge. And uh, that's pretty much everything. Down here there's another explanation using words, which it's obviously a lot of reading, but you can go through that if you want. <laughs> and of course, yeah, this is the, I guess I didn't explicitly say this, but this is the scale of the circle. So a one here would mean that the circle's diameter is the same as the shorter side's length. So a one here makes it so that the circle is exactly from top to bottom when it's centered. Um, I believe that I covered everything, so uh, I hope you enjoy the tool. And if you want to help, uh, the best ways to help are by liking my things on Thingiverse or becoming a patron. And good day to you.